Welcome back to The Jump. We're debuting a new segment today because the coaching carousel is in full throttle and we need to get caught up on the latest. There are currently five head coaching vacancies around the NBA. So without further ado, it is time for Where in the World is Wendy? Do well, Rachel, I'm in Philadelphia. Uh, the production staff here has provided no cheesesteaks, <laughs> but uh, the Sixers have two major candidates for their very interesting job opening. Uh, Mike D'Antoni, who was here as an assistant before uh, he went uh, to uh, Houston to become the head coach, is a strong candidate, as well as Tyron Liu, who is, I am told, very interested in this job. He wants the challenge of coaching Ben Simmons or Joel Embiid, just like he wanted the challenge of Kyrie and LeBron James hmm. in Cleveland. Now, I am told that the ownership Josh Harris and David Blitzer are very involved in this opening, and whoever gets this job will be heavily, and uh, their, their influence will well, be heavily on. Those are two on. marquee names, Ty Lue and Mike D'Antoni. Richard, what do you think? Uh, look, I, I think T. Lou and, and D'Antoni. Now, the one thing about D'Antoni is you think about the big, you know, he's not very big on bigs, <laughs> if you will, and Joel Embiid is really the cornerstone of their franchise. So, so is that a pro or a con that, that they've got that Embiid is on the roster if you're look, uh, if you're him? I'm not saying Dan Tony can do a lot of things. We've seen what he's done with Amari Stoudemire, uh, even though he's a little bit different. So he's not like anti-big, but I think coming off what he just came off of in Houston, going full small ball, I just I would be a little bit more nervous if I was Joel Embiid. Hmm, interesting. All right, where are we off to next, Brian? Well, Rachel, I am now in New Orleans on this Bourbon is amazing, Street, Brian. where they're selling Jello shots for uh, ten bucks, <laughs> just a few feet away here. I can bring you back Please. some if you want. Uh, now, New Orleans is interesting. Um, they are very interested in Tyron Lue, uh, which, which would reunite David Griffin, general manager, with the guy he won a championship with in Cleveland. But they may have to wait on what happens in Philadelphia. So David Griffin is in a holding pattern, taking a look at what happens with Ty Lue. If he can't get Ty Lue, then he'll move on to other candidates. But he thinks the Ty Lue-Zion Williamson match could be very attractive. We'll see well, how that develops. You guys know New Orleans is my favorite city in America. And I actually think this is a hugely attractive coaching gig. Richard, do you agree? Pros and cons of this one? I agree. This is hugely attractive. The only difference is, and I know Ty Lue has the ability, but I know that, you know, he never had to develop talent the same way he did. You know, I, I, that's why I think the Philadelphia one is even more intriguing because those are established players. These are still players that you've got to continue to grow and nurture and that's just something we haven't seen Tyron Lou done. He hasn't done that yet, but I know he has the ability to do it, but that's why I think the Philly one is most intriguing for T. Lou. I mean, look, you've got such high talent guys there. Zion Williamson's a start, but Brandon Ingram, you've got, you know, Lonzo Ball, you've got the list goes on and on with Drew Holiday. I don't know if J.J. Reddick's going back there. Got a lot of guys, a lot of tools if you get that job. I think it's extremely, extremely attractive. And by the way, they didn't make the playoffs this year. So if you just make the playoffs next season, yeah. Win. That Win. makes that an attractive job, too. All right, Brian Winhorst, where are we going next? Well, Rachel, I am now in a drone <laughs> over the Indianapolis Motor so Speedway. Impressive. So that must mean I'm talking about the Indiana Pacers. Now, if you can believe it, the Indiana Pacers have interviewed more than 20 candidates for this opening All over right. Zoom. And uh, now they, they're scheduling second interviews, and there's a, still a long list. I have uh, heard that guys like Dave Yeager, uh, guys like assistant in Milwaukee, Darvin Ham, 76ers assistant, Ime Udoka, uh, are among the guys who are getting uh, an opportunity here. And, of course, our colleague here, our own colleague at ESPN, Chauncey Billups, in the mix mm. as well. All right. So, aside from the fact that you get to be around fast cars, apparently, Richard, what are the pros and cons of the Pacers head coaching? Well, look, all of these jobs have a lot of cons and a lot of pros. Well, we're This is the thing about Indiana. You're not sure what Victor Oladipo's situation is. Uh, they're coming off a situation where they made it to the postseason uh, again, but, you know, Nate McMillan, you know, for whatever reason, couldn't make management happy there. Uh, this is not a place that you're going to attract a ton of free agents, so you really have to build from within and develop talent. So, you know, you have a very good team, but I don't know what your cap is there. Hmm, interesting. I'm very curious. 20 candidates. 20 candidates! Wow. Get it narrow down. All right, Brian, where are we going next? Well, Rachel, I am in Bricktown, nice. which means I'm in Oklahoma City. The river doesn't go anywhere, but don't tell anybody that. <laughs> the Thunder are beginning to look at a rebuild. 
uh, which is one of the reasons why Billy Donovan did not stay. So the expectations, this could be a first-time head coach. Uh, some of the names that I have heard, uh, David Vanterpool, uh, who's an assistant with the, with the Timberwolves, uh, Adrian Griffin, who's been a candidate for, for jobs over the years, uh, recently with Toronto. And watch out for a, a sleeper candidate, Will Hardy, assistant with the San Antonio Spurs. A lot of, play, a lot of people are very high on him, very young, 32 All right, so rebuilding, old. Richard, but what are the pros and cons of the Thunder beyond just the idea of developing or maybe getting your first job if you're an assistant? Well, that, that's the thing. So you know, you see the writing is on the wall. So whoever's going to get this first-time head coaching job, you imagine that they're not going to win. They have a ton of draft picks. They have a lot that they're going to be able to build. And so the idea is that you can build quickly. You should be able to build quickly with the amount of uh, draft picks and young quality talent. But that, again, means the writing's probably on the wall for Chris Paul and maybe even St Stephen Adams. So, you know, you're going to lose. You're, whatever you see when you take the job is not what you're going to get. Well, I know that you mentioned David Vanderpool. I know a lot of his former players swear by him, so I'm sure they'll be getting lots of endorsements coming in if they're really interviewing him. I, I would say that whoever takes that job has to basically make a deal with Sam Presti and say, whatever the win-loss record is for the next two or three years, it not is on me. It is. Yep. Not on me. All right, I think I know where we're headed next. Brian. Well, Rachel, I am in mission control at NASA, <laughs> which means we're talking about the Houston Rockets. Daryl so Morey impressive. was just over my shoulder at a computer, but he went to sharpen his pencil. Uh, he is uh, he is known for a while. There was a good chance he was going to have a coaching opening. Uh, keep an eye on former Rocket, a guy who won a championship here, Sam Cassell. He may be getting his first coaching look off the LA Clippers staff, and if not him, one of the favorite or one of the favorites, one of the guys sleeping uh, is our colleague here at ESPN. Former Rockets coach Jeff Van Gundy in the mix for this job would be very different than Mike D'Antoni, but this personnel is built to play fast, so we'd see how well, look, he would handle JBG that. never left Houston, still lives there. I know, still very connected to the organization. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.